Bonjour and welcome to French Action. I know object pronouns in French is a problem for most people. If it's the case for you, please watch this video. Vous êtes prêts? C'est parti! There are two types of object pronouns. We have the direct object pronouns and the indirect object pronouns. So today we're going to look at him or her and to him and to her. So let's start with the direct object pronouns. We have two sentences here. I'm looking for Paul. I can see Paul. You can obviously notice a repetition of Paul. So to save that repetition, we are going to use an, a pronoun and that pronoun is going to be him. I'm looking for Paul. I can see him. It also happens to be an object pronoun because we are saying, who can I see? Paul. I can see Paul. So it's an object. And that object is directly placed after the verb. There's nothing between C and Paul. So this makes it a direct object. And that is the reason why the him we're going to use is a direct object pronoun. So we're going to have three forms. Him will be le, her will be la, and them, more than one, will be les. And I remind you that le and la will change with to an L apostrophe if the word starts with a vowel or a silent H. So here are some examples. If I say, où est Paul? Where is Paul? Je le cherche. I'm looking for him. So here, what is interesting, straight away, you can see that the le is placed before the verb, whereas in English is after the verb. So we're going to continue with a female this time. Où est Sophie? Je la cherche. I'm looking for her. And if I say, où sont Paul et Sophie? Je les cherche. I'm looking for them. And I'm going to have, je les cherche. So let's move on to the indirect object pronoun and we have I gave the book to Paul, I gave the book to him. So you can see that here we have a two between book and him and that is going to make it indirect. In terms of object it's the, the same thing. Who did I give the book to? Paul. Paul remains an object. But the difference there is that it's indirect because of the preposition to. So in this example, I have, I gave the book to him or to her. What you're going to find is that it's the same pronoun we're going to use. Je lui ai donné le livre. Je lui ai donné le livre for to her as well. And because it's in the past tense, and the verb starts with avoir, we're going to put it just before avoir because remember, it's the pronoun is placed after the verb. Now, if we want to say, I gave the book to them, then that's where the change is going to take place. We're going to say, je leur ai donné le livre. I said that the pronoun is going to be placed before the verb, but what happens if we have two verbs, like I'm going to give him or to give her the book, we have I'm going, that's the first verb, and then to give, which is the second one. Well, it's going to be placed between the two verbs. It's going to be je vais lui donner le livre. However, if we use the imperative and we say, for example, give him or give her the book, you're going to see that the pronoun will have to be placed after the verb and that gives you donne lui le livre and you're going to have a little hyphen between the verb and the pronoun. Donne lui le livre. So without a context, donne lui le livre is give him the book or give her the book. 
But beware, it's not because a structure is direct in English that is going to be direct in French. Here's an example of this. He phones her, as you can see, there's no preposition between phone and her, so it's direct, but the translation is il lui téléphone, which means that it's an indirect structure. Here's a little story showing you how those direct and indirect object pronouns have been used. Let's read it. Alain lui fait une surprise. Alain surprises her. Elise l'aime. Il l'aime aussi. Elise loves him. He loves her too. Il l'invite à faire une promenade. He invites her to go for a walk. Il lui raconte son rêve. He tells her about his dream. Elle lui dit qu'elle ne le croit pas. She tells him that she doesn't believe him. Il la demande en mariage et lui donne une bague. Elle le remercie. He proposes to her and gives her a ring. She thanks him. Elle lui dit oui et l'embrasse. She says yes to him and kisses him. That is the end of our little story. I hope that you were able to see the difference in the use of the direct and indirect object pronouns in this story. Voici un exercice. So, here are four sentences in English which you're going to translate into French. Numéro 1. Where is Pierre? I'm helping him with his homework. Numéro 2. He loves her. He's sending her flowers. Numéro 3. You teach them to cook. Numéro 4. She reminds him of his mother. Voici les réponses. Numéro 1. Où est Pierre? Je l'aide avec ses devoirs. Numéro 2. Il l'aime. Il lui envoie des fleurs. Numéro 3. Tu leur apprends à cuisiner. So here, be careful. Apprendre à... So that's the reason why you have to have the A. You cannot say in French, tu leur apprends cuisiner. You need to have this A. So you also need to learn the verbs with their prepositions. Numéro 4. Il lui rappelle sa mère. Bravo if you manage to translate these sentences correctly. Don't worry if you didn't. Just go through all this again. And I hope to see you in the next video. Au revoir.